we have something quite different today. We're evaluating a two auto DS90 soldering station today. Uh, it is an entry level iron. It will not compete with our professional grade iron, though we'll do a few comparisons as to give you a little bit of difference between an entry level iron and a professional iron. Let's open up the box and see what's in it. Manual, solder, I will probably never use. Soldering reel holder, which I might use. A banana cable, I'm not really sure what this is intended for yet. Always handy to have around a soldering sucker. ESD tweezers, a selection of tips, and the soldering station itself, which is surprisingly light. A couple of details jump out at me right off the bat. Variable temperature, which is very nice. A wet sponge and a dry sponge. Very nice features. It looks like it comes with a small bevel tip, which might be useful to play around with. Other tip options look like a conical, another bevel, larger bevel, an even larger bevel, and an even larger bevel, and a blade tip. Oh, I'm sorry, there's, a, there's one chisel tip in there as well. I'm probably going to change this out to the chisel because for most of our demonstrations, that will probably be the most useful tip. So this is your kind of old school standard uh, uh, hobbyist iron or what used to be professional grade iron and you just unscrew the shield pop out the tip your heating element is built onto the iron which is less efficient than the current technology but still useful in some applications we're going to slide our chisel on another drawback of these irons is trying to change tips mid job this whole area is going to be quite hot and you typically will need an additional tool to loosen the screw so that you can get the shield off and put a new tip on you do not want to handle the tip or the shield with your hands at all this appears to be our iron holder we'll slide it into place convenient spots to put the rest of our tips overall my initial impressions of this setup is it's fairly well thought out for a cheaper uh, entry level iron and i cheated and i put my solder on their little soldering holder and it seems like it's reasonable and the tweezers are just standard little bent tweezers i don't think i will even use them for this evaluation but if you need some bent tweezers there you go there are two screws on the side of the station where you can screw on the soldering roll holder the alligator clip appears to plug in the back and is supplied for some sort of grounding. I don't know that that's entirely necessary, but uh, it is an option if you're concerned. I don't really have anything to ground it to that I know of, but hey, it's there if you need it. Okay, another very impressive feature with this iron that I wouldn't expect is when you click it on, it has a digital readout. It not only has Fahrenheit, it also has Celsius, and it gives you the rating or the temperature in both uh, ratings. I've grabbed a single layer uh, prototype board and a through hole component. And let's put this thing to some typical work. And for this demonstration, I'm just using some holes that are about the proper width. These are not actually made for this component. Put a little bit of solder on the tip and we'll tack it in real quick. Now we can solder it proper. It's done a fine job of that, as you would expect, on a single layer board on a through hole component. Threw a little bit of a different test. Let's see if we can fill this hole up with some solder. Let's grab some wick, our typical wick that we use. Let's see how we do at wicking. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Now, just for funsies, I just want to see if I can touch up these LEDs. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to get a little mean to it. I am a console, game console repairman, and I would like to see what it can do on a game console repair board and we're going to go to what we normally would be working on on an xbox original board and let's just see if this chisel tip can wet these anchors at all I 
grab the knife tip. I think it might be a little bigger. It's wetting about half at the same temperature I would normally be using. Oh, there we go. We got it wetting the whole thing now. Not too bad. It took a little while. But we did eventually get it hot enough to wet that. And this is unleaded solder on this. I have not replaced these ports on this board. This is a donor board. No, let's go over to this one. See how long we can... How quickly we can get that one to heat up. Yeah, not bad, not bad. And not bad. See, does get there. A little bit shocked even. Let's hit up our anchors. And see if we can feed solder on that. Yeah, certainly can. Okay, because it's warm, I'm going to use a tool. And this is one of the drawbacks of these type of irons. Yes, yeah, you do need to use a tool. It's going to be quite warm after soldering. So you'll have to carefully remove the shield, find a place to sit it. I have an aluminum mat here, so that works. And replace the tip. Yep, that's warm. <laughs> you would not want to try to do that by hand. So use your tool. Turning it back on, letting it warm up. I'll let you know when it gets to temperature. It takes a little bit at these temperatures. And we're at temperature, according to it. So as we're having a little bit more fun, Let's try something else we'd normally commonly have to work on. Eh, maybe I'll try a smaller tip. And again, the pain part of an iron like this. Ooh. That almost hurt. I didn't do wonders on my aluminum, on my linoleum floor either. I burned a spot in my floor. I am never getting that security deposit back. Warming up the iron. And we're just to temperature according to it. Get a little solder on our tip. See if it'll tend these pads. We're having a little bit more issue with this. Let's just sit here and rub and see how long it takes us to get some action. Okay, it gets there. Just have to be a little bit patient. back and forth warming up the area and we're getting there I think the solder is climbing up the iron, causing us an issue.
again. I am being very unfair here. And it is showing its deficiencies. It can get there. It is getting there. Slowly but surely. But boy. Yeah, that's not sexy. So to show you a little bit of contrast. Let's grab our micro pencil. WXMP. Roughly a same size tip. And it just does a bang up job. White recovery. Recovery is everything on a professional iron. Okay, my final verdict on this is this is a fairly capable beginner iron. I'm fairly impressed with what it can do on, as far as like the HDMI anchors went. That was uh, fairly impressive. Uh, it seems to be a better iron than what I started with, which was with uh, Hakko 907. That thing just had no guts at all. This thing seems to have at least a little bit of oomph to it. Uh, would I recommend it for my work? No. Uh, as you saw in the retimer, it just doesn't quite have the capability. Uh, my micro pencil outperformed their primary iron. I mean, completely destroyed it. So, and as you would expect, my micro pencil is probably double, almost triple the cost of this entire setup. So the big question is, will I use this iron on my bench? And the answer may surprise you. Yes, I'm going to use this iron on my bench, but not for working on an HDMI port or something like that. I'll show you what I intend to use the iron for. I plan to use it for this awesome little piece of kit. This is a soldering platform for doing things along the nature of Touch ID or uh, flex ribbon connectors or even possibly the connectors on a game card reader. Things of that nature. The iron is cooled down enough that I could take off the shield and the tip. This little platform separates into two pieces. It is specifically made for this type of iron. The shield is a little bit warm, so I don't think I physically want to handle that. I didn't wait that long. And now we screw this little platform on to the tip. Like so. And let's just say in theory I want to remove this connector from this ribbon. You would just press it down on this platform, get it up to temperature, and you should just be able to flick that connector right off. I'll see if I can find something to show you physically how that would be done. Okay, we're bringing up the platform to temperature. And it says it's at temperature now. We'll be patient here and give it a minute though. Okay, we're getting some movement here. There we go. For $44.54, that's a pretty good price for a pretty capable entry-level iron. I have to say, I'm moderately surprised and impressed. I will have it linked in the description below this video. And that's my review of the 2Auto DS90. My conclusion is it's a very capable beginner iron. Uh, it seems to be have a little bit of beef to it. It was actually better than my beginner iron. Uh, I would not recommend it for the work I do. Uh, it'll get you there probably on an HDMI port, but if you try anything else with it, uh, you'll probably get yourself in some trouble. So, yeah, there's a definite difference between a beginner iron and a professional iron, but for a beginner iron, it's quite capable. And I will actually use this for professional work with my platform because that platform actually does not fit any of my professional irons. Thank you to 2 Auto for sending me the iron for review. I hope you appreciated the review. And if you like this video, you'll like this one right here. I'll see you there.